mark. 15 seconds until airtime. Feels great to be a duck. Give it to me, baby. My house. I'm taking it there. Third competitors, they'll want to put the O on. Three, got it. We're going to compete to a standard every day. The Oregon standard. Rebound. That's it. it in. A coin more to go. The opportunity to play, put Oregon on your chest, should mean a great deal to you. Unloads on one into left field, back toward the wall. Gone. This program is staged to compete and to win championships. Oregon wins. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, let's talk Oregon athletics. A busy day. Getting ready for a lot of basketball this weekend. Also, Oregon baseball head coach Mark Wasikowski just met with the media. Keep updated on social media and on GoDucks.com. We may have some changes to the weekend schedule for Oregon baseball because they are anticipating a bunch of rain down in San. Barbara supposed to be a four game series starting on Friday down at UCSB the Ducks are looking at some contingency options Mark Wasikowski talked to the media today we'll have that for you later on this week also Oregon softball coming off a 5-0 and weekend Melissa Lombardi Ducks softball head coach we talked with her in the studio earlier today that's coming up in just a little while also a focus on Oregon baseball again the freshman pitching a huge impact to open the season 4-0. We're going to talk about that later on on today's show as well. Uh, other news and notes around Oregon athletics, a busy weekend on the horizon. However, it's Athletic Director Tuesday, and this has been an Athletic Director Tuesday segment that's like six months in the making. Ian McFarland is here. Ian! Hi! Hey, man. How's it going? I'm great, man. How are you? <laughs> great, dude. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, thanks for being here. Okay, so this is the first time that Ian has ever been in the Country Financial Studio and on Duck Insider. Do you know what that means? No, I don't. Okay, uh, so we have a competition. Okay. You have to tell your two-minute life story. Two minutes. Okay. Two-minute life story. There's a stopwatch. I'm going to start it. Okay. Uh, so the two-minute life story of Ian McFarland. Go. Two-minute life story. So... Uh, I don't know if I'll take the two minutes, it's a little shorter, but uh, grew up in Denver, was kind of born there, lived there until about 12, and then I moved to Austin, Texas for middle school, went to Lake Travis High School, home of Baker Mayfield, Gary Gilbert, you know, <laughs> kind of that sort of uh, football sort of sort of school, so that was always a big emphasis. Uh, graduated high school, went to University of North Texas in Denton, Texas, just outside Dallas, um, got involved in kind of the creative social media side of things, just really just kind of by accident, right? I kind of started doing... Uh, just graphic design is like just for fun. I just like sports. It just kind of happened, and I came across a posting. It says, "Hey, we're looking for recruiting designers. Just uh, you know, this is kind of right when social media and graphics and recruiting started to kind of really take off." Uh, sent him an email. Kind of got involved there, and just kind of did whatever I could to make myself valuable. I was making just funny graphics, edits, just whatever, photoshopping kids, and and just kind of did whatever I could to. Uh, get involved there. Never really thought that uh, there'd be a job in sports. Like I, I never thought that was never my plan. I was always like, I'm gonna get my business degree and I'm just gonna figure it out and go from there. Um, <laughs> and then it just kind of happened. Like I just kind of got connected with the right people and and I went to Notre Dame for a year, kind of a postgrad internship sort of thing. Um, loved that. Met a lot of good people. Really kind of understood what working in a bigger program was. Kind of moving from G5 to more, um, you know, obviously Power Five level, yep. um, which was super fun. And then uh, from there, went to the University of Louisville for a year. Again, more football focus, and then uh, was there for, again, a year. Moved down to Atlanta with Georgia Tech. Yep. Uh, that was kind of my first managing role, kind of led the uh, – I was a brand manager, right, so kind of anything from leading the creative team and, and kind of working a bunch of stuff. And then a uh, job opened up here at, at Oregon. I've always loved Oregon, always loved uh, vacationing out here as a kid. Nice. Um, just was a dream spot for me. I uh, got lucky enough to get connected out here, took the job, and then about you know six months ago kind of moved into the role I have now. So um, – that's kind of I don't know if that took two minutes or not, but that's kind of where I'm at uh, in my life. Minute fifty six. Hey, that's pretty good. That was really good. That's pretty good. Uh, that's one of the top five that we've yeah. ever had. I don't know closest. about that. No, it is. I know we have okay. a leaderboard. Okay. Uh, the record is a minute fifty nine point five six. Who's that? 
uh, Dave Butler, okay. former Oregon volleyball assistant coach. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so Dave was the closest we ever got to two minutes. Bo Nix famously said that he thought Dave was cheating. <laughs> so, you know, Bo, I can neither confirm nor deny still to this day, but Dave, if you're tuning in, tell me someday if you were using a stopwatch on your computer, please. Because we were doing it on Zoom at the time. So oh, I, yeah. I couldn't tell, you know, like, was he watching the clock or how was he doing it? Yeah. So. Anyway, Minute 56, well done. Thanks, man. Um, and also, going to be a father soon. That's right, yeah, April 15th. Uh, we're going to have our, our first child. My wife and I, it's going to be a girl. Um, so we're super excited about that. So um, something that you really can't prepare for. You know, like I have no idea what to expect, obviously, um, using your guidance, Joey. So <laughs> Don't uh, listen to a word I say. Nah. Listen to everything that Lizzie says. That's <laughs> the truth. Uh, but, no, we're super excited and, and kind of ready to – you know, obviously, it's kind of bounced around a little bit, ready to set down some roots and kind of be here for a little bit and Great. start the family. So That's cool. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, on the air, I get to say that Thanks. to you. Yeah. That was a great two-minute life story. And one of my follow-ups for you, and I wanted to ask you this in general, you touched on it a bit. Mm -hmm. Why Oregon? Why was Oregon such a draw for you? It wasn't just that you vacationed here. There was sure. something about this place, I'm sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously, you always look back, and um, Oregon was always, like, the flashy, you know, growing up from, like, the 10 to 14-year-old kid, it's like, Oregon's got all the cool stuff all the time, right? And it's always making headlines. And that was something where it's like, oh, man, can you imagine being the one to take the photos of the uniforms? Or right. um, even just like, you know, and I was always so football focused, right? But now that uh, I'm here and that kind of – that was a big draw to me too is like I want to do more of all general athletics, right? Less um, – you know, I don't – off season was fine, but I love going from football to basketball to yeah. the golf. To I'm the, the same way. way. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think that's like one of the biggest draws was – uh, less of, you know, because in off-season you're like, okay, we, we post workout videos already. We did that. It's like, what else are we going to do? But, you know, you get to move from high-level sports to high-level sports, and, and the, the excellence that Oregon has, I think, was something that really kind of drew me here. And obviously, there's worse places to live. So No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I want to make sure that I introduce properly. Assistant Athletic Director for Creative and Digital Media. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Oh, man. So everything <laughs> – uh, gosh, everything. So no day is the same. I was just trying to think about that today. Like, every day I just kind of approach it uh, one, at, one at a time, right? So – Everything external facing. So the biggest kind of task we do is, is kind of managing our um, Go Ducks, create our social channels, right? So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and then also just kind of help creating content for our team accounts is kind of a bigger thing. Yeah. So it's kind of shifting less of a focus more towards the main account and kind of creating like 19 really good uh, team accounts, right? Yeah. So that sort of thing. So I have – those of you who have always asked me, like, well, what, how, do, how do you go about a uniform shoot? Like, I get that question, yeah. right? How do you go about a uniform shoot? How, how do you, you know, create uh, what has become the Oregon brand on social media? So that's what I want to talk with you about because mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting to, to sort of peel back the curtain on that. But I do want to back up a little bit, and you talked about how Oregon in general – has influenced like social media around sports. Can you can you like summarize that from from your expertise in, in in social media and digital and creative and just the way that the Oregon brand has influenced what I would imagine a lot of other sports accounts are doing across college athletics? Yeah, definitely. I think looking back, kind of where Oregon first started, right? Like we kind of were trendsetters that way. Even before I got here, before you got here, right? It's, it's just whatever Oregon did, it was always flashy, it was always cool, it was always trendsetting, right? And I think a lot of people played catch up for a long time, and they still are. Right, like we have the audience, we have the the national recognition. Like a lot of our fans are in Eugene, but they're also all the way across the country, right? So um, every time we speak, or every time we tweet or do something, we're we're speaking to more people than just the grassroots, right? We're thinking, you know, how are we nationally impacting what we're doing here? Uh, and I think a lot of people are trying to match that same sort of level, right? Yeah. We're really lucky in that we have that. How do we hold on to it? And a lot of people are thinking, how do we get to what they have, right? So. To that point, mm -hmm. with like holding on to it, and it, it's one thing to, to get successful, another thing to maintain yeah. success. And I know you think about this all the time, so I asked this question knowing full well that you and I have talked off the air about this, mm -hmm. so bear with us, fans. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of curious, like, what strategies do you employ, even like day-to-day, month-to-month, to stay current? You know, things change so fast in social oh media. Gosh, Twitter yeah. may not be a thing in a month. I don't know. Twitter was not the same it was two days ago. Right. Yeah. Um, it's just every day you got to think about what are we doing to push the envelope, right? What does this look like for us? How are we, um, one, empowering our student athletes and telling good stories, but two, how are we doing them in a cutting edge way? Um, and again, that's what worked last week is not going to work again. Um, and I think we're trying to figure that out. And, uh, it's, it's been a little bit difficult, I think with the way, you know, these platforms are changing and yeah. everything like that. So we're learning to adjust like stuff that, again, you know, you used to post at 5 PM every night, you're gonna get the most interaction. That's not really true anymore. Right, so how we how we figuring that out, um, and it's a lot of self reflection. There's a lot of leaning on our students a lot too. Yep. Uh, our creative students they are so plugged in, and um, I like to think I'm still young too. But like the stuff that they come up with is just it's awesome because they know what's going on. They know what 
um, our target demographic is wants to see. Yeah, so you bring up a great point. So I, I actually th – this has happened in, in the studio now, and Scott can attest this. Shoot, Brady, one of our interns, is directing the show today. Brady has probably heard me say this, <laughs> and you can nod or shake your head vigorously in disagreement if you have not. But I, I have – so I'm 30 years old now, mm -hmm. and I have said to, to all the interns that work in broadcast production and all the interns that work with us, and I would imagine similar for you with, with the Godux creative team, if, if you as a student are not challenging me, then we're probably not on the cutting edge anymore. Correct. Right? Like, I, I am not consuming things the same way that a 19-year-old is, right? That's a huge deal, isn't it, listening to the student-athletes and the students in general? 100%. I mean, I think I kind of view our role as, like, almost tell me what you want us to do and we'll, yes. we'll make it happen. Like, we have the resources and the capabilities to do it. Um, but, I mean, we – again – we're, I'm more than just the brand. You're more than just the brand. The brand is the people that we serve, and we serve student athletes. We serve the, our students. And they they're so plugged in, and the stuff they come up with is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of that, um, one of the things that we're going to do today is show some of your favorites over the the last few months okay. of, of creative elements and and things that many of you have seen on social media. First, before we do this, take us behind the scenes, if you could. Like, what does a a photo shoot look like? How much work goes into this? How much thought process ahead of time versus how much you're you're reacting to in, in an individual subject, if you will? Like, take us through that process. Yeah. So I think uh, just thinking of, we'll start with these are just normal f f football photo shoot, right? So we start with working with Josh Heim and and kind of the football creative team and kind of say, hey, what are we wearing this week? What does it look like? What athlete we're going to use, right? Because um, the athlete really is important in terms of what position. Like, you know, if it's an offensive lineman, it's a little bit – you got to kind of warm them up a little bit. But um, <laughs> if you get uh, – you know, if you get like a, a defense back, they just pretty much run the show for you. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, it, it's a lot of, you know, first brainstorming. Like, what do we want to do? Uh, at this point, we've probably taken uniform shoot nearly everywhere in this – probably you know this whole campus it feels like you did it behind the scoreboard one correct yeah we've done a lot of stuff we did you know it's always like so we never want to repeat right because i think um you know we want to be cutting edge right so we kind of look at what have we even done before um what's the story we want to tell what's the most like what are the details we want to show right if, if it's a green uniform we want to really highlight that um so it's a lot of planning and then it comes to honestly we'll just kind of walk around and try to find a spot right and that usually takes honestly it could take you know an hour it could take three hours it takes a few days like we usually have some stuff lined up and then we um, work with the equipment staff, get, you know, get, make sure operations knows what we're doing, get them going there. Um, and from start to finish, you know, between photo shoot and the end and we process photos, I mean, we're looking at like two to three day process. Yeah. Right. So it's like a, it's like a Monday to Wednesday at 5 p.m. release and we're pretty much working on the entire time. You've said the, the phrase, and I love this because this is how I think about what, what I do is that you're a storyteller. Yeah. Right. Like at the end of the day, that's what all of us are, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are a storyteller. So, how do you, like in your own creative process, how do you balance like we're going to make this because it looks really cool and it's <laughs> going to grab attention versus we're telling a story and maybe the flashiness isn't the best way to tell the story? Like how do you balance that? Yeah, I think it's kind of figuring out what, what you want to do because, right, it, it, it's okay to be flashy sometimes. It doesn't always have to tell a story. If it's a cool photo, great, right. that's awesome. But, like, you're going to have those big pieces where you're going to want to tell a story, right? And that's really just kind of, you know, that, it goes back to the planning and, and the kind of the, the phase of, how important is it to tell the story? What's the underlying message here? Um, and, and I think, you know, again, just kind of picking your battles, right? Um, yeah. There's no real, real answer to that. I mean, if it's a great photo and it's cool and it lives and it, it think it's going to have great interaction because it's cool, let's run it, right? But, you know, if, if there's something more that we can we can do here, let's do that as well. Love that. Yeah. Assistant Athletic Director for Creative and Digital Media, Ian McFarland is our guest in the Country Financial Studio. Okay, we're going to get time out. Uh, we're going to come back. And then we're going to show some of your favorites. Let's do it. Um, and I, I want to learn all about the process. And we're going to nerd out. <laughs> yeah. When we come back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. It is Athletic Director Tuesday on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. 
They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. Are you thinking about buying medicine online? A search for online pharmacies yields more than 20 million results. But which ones can you trust? Medicines bought from unlicensed online pharmacies can be dangerous. You may get a fake drug, your condition may get worse, or you may experience a bad reaction. Don't put your health at risk. To learn how to find an online pharmacy that's safe and legal, visit FDA.gov slash BeSafeRx. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how. With honest conversations that let them know what we expect, that's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be shared with friends or family. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. We're back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack in the Country Financial Studio. Joined today on Athletic Director Tuesday by Ian McFarlane. Joey. Thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Assistant Athletic Director for Creative and Digital Media. That position uh, around the country didn't really exist 10 years ago. No, not at all. How yeah. much has the industry grown? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, again, I kind of mentioned it a little bit, but when I first started, even in 2017, like, 18 as a student, like I was, there was no such thing as graphics, or it was right. just like we're just trying to show recruits love, and we're just kind of coming up with it as we go. Uh, but now it's kind of become this. It's the only window that a lot of people have in your programs, um, and as, as you know, for people that can't make it to games or kind of fans from far away, it's yeah. that's how they interact with your content. That's how they keep up with stories and keep up with athletes. And um, there's a lot of importance there, and I think investing in that and and kind of realizing that um, you know the more you can do on there, the kind of better you can kind of tell stories and, and also kind of grow the fan base a little bit. You know, on that note, like you're a connection to, to fans. What you do is a connection to recruits. 100%. I mean, like yeah. you, you mentioned that it's the window into into the team. I kind of feel like it's even like the, the front door yeah. into the team. Oh, you know? my God. We're not yeah. just looking. Sometimes we're, we're inviting people to step in. Yeah, I mean, I think if you come across the GoDucks account, which is kind of the umbrella account, you kind of come in, you start seeing, hey, they're posting about softball, they're posting about this, you start kind of connecting. And, and, right, you're kind of finding new accounts and you're kind of following other teams you may not have done before. And um, there's just it, – it's just a really interesting industry that's kind of turned into, right? Yeah. At first it was just, hey, just come make graphics. But now it's all about – how are we um, empowering our student athletes? How are we making sure that you know they are have every resource they need to build their brand, and they feel like when they leave here they're stronger uh, socially, you know, as, as they can be, right. right? In that way, so a lot of different elements into this role that kind of, you know, I mean, half of our role is just giving student athletes content, right? right? Yeah, so because yeah. you know it is ultimately like it's it's the Oregon brand, but then the other side of that is you're growing an individual's brand, hundred percent. Yeah, that's part of what uh, recruiting and ultimately leaving this place does for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian McFarland joining us. Okay, some of your favorites. So Ian was kind enough to send us over a folder full of some of the the, <laughs> the best things that you've seen on social media across various Oregon athletics accounts. And so what I want to do is show some of them. Those of you that are listening on the radio, I encourage you to go watch this portion of the show uh, on demand on YouTube or on the Godux Facebook, wherever you watch the show. Um, because this is really cool. Like This is a chance for us to, to, to get a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, if you will. So Brady's going to show a few. All right. We like shoes. We like shoes. At the University of Oregon. That's what we do. I mean, this is simple, Ian, but effective, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean... I, I remember getting a text from Donovan, the equipment manager, and he's like, hey, I got some shoes for you to pick up. And I go over there, and he gives me like 25 pairs or something insane. <laughs> and I was like, what am I going to do with all these shoes? So um, obviously surrounded by a great team, right? Like we like I kind of mentor our students, but even, um, you know, Amy Sinicola who works with me. She's done a fantastic job. She's new here. Um, but we have 14 creative students that we kind of – they I, I kind of work as like people give me stuff to do, and I kind of help delegate it, right? But with this yeah. piece, right – kind of took the photos of the shoes. We thought, you know, how are we going to show this many shoes in one time? Um, <laughs> came up with that. And then this is exactly like I just get these texts. Hey, we got a pair of shoes. Can you come pick them up and take photos. I'm like, yeah, let's figure it out. And I don't know what they look like till I get there. Right. Um, 
so exactly just kind of a ways to um you know like people think of Oregon they think of Nike right so we right. got to make sure we do this for the high quality high quality level and the they, shoe box for those has been sitting on the desk yeah there you go you know, it's a great box it's a great box exactly so um this is just something we did to um and you know I think Division Street ended up using some of these That's as well right. so um it kind of worked out for that way um, this is a cool little piece we did for more of like fan interaction, right? So this week we kind of redid the video boards in terms of – It's uh, so good. It's, it's great, dude. I think when you – it doesn't do the justice. When you go there in person and the lights are off and it's playing, it just really changes the whole atmosphere. And This was something that our creative student, Connor, actually came to me with. He's like, hey, I really want to redo these. And um, just kind of connected him, and he just self you know, did this himself. Like, so to add a little more context, because I, I, this is one of the, my favorite things that, that has changed Matthew Knight Arena – it really makes you feel like you're deep in the woods, right? Like yeah. That's something that I've said with the intros. When the lights go off, you feel like you're deep in the woods. So these are the LEDs that you see around the arena. I mm-hmm. mean, you're like walking through the trees in a very just Oregon modern way. I loved this. It's the small touch points where you feel like, you know, w- what can we brand that nobody else has really touched yet? And this took Connor – a while. A while, yeah. I mean, this was not something he just threw together. This was he yeah. did research, and he looked up blueprints of MKA, and you can kind of see him in there, and he's like, how do we – you know, this was like multiple storyboards and making sure we're telling the story, and uh, he had to resize everything. And you can kind of see a tiny yeah. band up there to go all the way around the ribbon boards, and um, it's really cool. And you, you can see on TV, you can see, like, the uh, the hustle boards. And everything. That's right. That looks nice. So. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, this is another piece that Connor did. I mean, this is really something we want to do is how do we take in-game content uh, and kind of elevate it, right? So we, do, we usually do a Ducks win, but – being able to use photos that we captured during the game kind of shows that sense of, uh, you know, that we can we're telling the story that just happened, um, and it kind of makes us look, you know, really well prepared and um, good for the team. Not I mean, look really well prepared, you are well prepared. Exactly. I mean, again, super lucky for the great team that that we have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just they blow me away every single day what they come up with. I mean, this is, I was like, hey, can you come up with something? And he just was like, yeah, here you well, go. Well, and to me, like storytelling wise, mm-hmm. it also just looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, exactly. storytelling is good. I know. You know? And I always got to think about cool. that. Because, like, I, I overthink it. I'm like, here's a story and here's everything. And you're like, dude, that looks great. That's yeah. cool. That's all it has to do. Right? Yeah. And like, that's that's the kind of the fan we're going for. Is like, if it looks cool, yeah. let's run it. We want it all. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, One this, of my favorites. This one's awesome. This was, like, first thing. He's like, he's like, I really want to do game day graphics. And I was like, just run with it, whatever you come up with. And he, I just... It was like 11 p.m. when he sent this to me, and I was like, are "You kidding me? You just came up with this?" <laughs> like, so uh, this kind of kind of broke the internet a little bit. I think people really this was just something that no one's really seen before, right? And this was something that we filmed Bennett. And we just kind of were going to come up with something, and it just turned out unbelievable. I mean, people still ask me about this all the time today, and I'm just like, I wish I had something to do with this. I just I had nothing to do with it. So, yeah, but, but see, that's also I mean, it, it takes a team. I always yeah. say like it takes a village. That's one of all of the interns walk out of here like God, they roll their eyes at my dad jokes <laughs> and all my things, but like. You know, it takes a village. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was an Acro uniform shoot we did. Uh, so, we got new uniforms this year. Um, these just released this past week. Um, so, Amy Sinicola knocked these out of the park. And, you know, just as, from a storytelling perspective, like, if you look closely, you can see each O is made up of O's. Yeah. So, I don't know how many O's are in there. Probably in the thousands. A um, ton. Exactly. But it's like, what can we do to tell that story and, and really elevate ourselves here? Right? And um, <laughs> showing the personality a little bit. Anson. Again, I mean, Anson, <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, he's the funniest funniest guy i've met in a long time and, and he's uh, also one of the quietest guys i know which is so team. bizarre right um but this is just something we did like let's show more personality right we do the the classic you know arms cross flex but like he brought his own hat right he wanted to do that <laughs> he brought the cowboy he brought hat. the cowboy brought his own props and this is something that you know is a little bit different from like the normal clean cut go duck stuff that we do but i think you know it does i mean anson love this obviously you know and, and like see so you're gonna see this when he hits a home run at some point this season I everyone's so, yeah. gonna love that everyone's gonna love that right? Exactly. So this is, uh, you know, these media days we've been doing. Um, we actually have Acros today, so that's the last one of the semester or the term, right? But um, we're kind of – these are turning into more of – less of what, what we need and more of the experience of the student-athlete, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we're just – again, I, I kind of mentioned we, we send a lot of our content to student-athletes, so we create it and we, we upload it to Open Doors. So they get it on their phone. Uh, and these are just photos we, we kind of are, are, do, are doing for them, right? So we're, we're uploading these. They have it. They can use it to build their brand and post on their accounts. Um, but really, like – for media day, we need probably 200, 300 photos, right? Yeah, really, realistically, and I mean, for track and field, we uploaded like thirty-seven thousand photos, <laughs> right? Which is the 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 amount we're doing between you know with Eric Evans and our student help and Amy. Like I said, like it's 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 unbelievable the the volume that we're kind of doing at this point. But again, yeah. you kind of got to do it to uh, make sure everybody has what they need. Well, to, to so you're seeing a lot of these. Those of you that are watching, you're seeing a lot of the photos that get taken at these photo shoots. Well, all the graphics that you see throughout the course of a season that, that you and your team Ian are putting together, 
those all get done way ahead of time. Oh yeah, you know, like oh, those yeah. graphics are are sitting ready to. They're locked and loaded. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah, we, we we do a good job at kind of creating templates and and giving uh, you know our communication staff opportunity to kind of create graphics, and we we kind of help out where we can, but we try to brand every sport as much as we can. Right. Um, this was one of my favorites. This thing rocks. You dude. talk about storytelling. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a really cool piece, and really really like how it came together. And um, funny enough, it like the arm is actually like my intern's roommate's arm so he had to like <laughs> he had to like cut it out and change it out because he couldn't get it right and um i would never know if he didn't tell me that um but yeah. this is again the story where it's like you know two amazing student athletes university of oregon now are going professional and how do we tell that story and uh, and playing professionally on the same know, team exactly it's amazing crazy uh i love this because you know everyone's like oh you gotta have a great camera to have a great story like Rob Mosley took this photo yeah, on his iPhone. That's right. It has 107,000 likes. I was standing next to him when he took that photo. This, I, I mean, had just I had just stopped talking to Bo on the post game show. Yeah, I mean, he took it with his iPhone. I mean, you don't, you do not need the. I mean, it just goes to show the import, the timeliness is the most important thing. But also, like, this is just an awesome photo. Um, and it was just look Rob at Mosley. the joy on both of their faces, QB one and QB one, <sighs> huh? It's awesome. I mean, it's just. It's awesome, uh, and I just – That's great. I love how well that performed, and, and people are like, this is the best photo I've ever seen, and it's just – so I always give – you know, give Mosley credit where you can, um, but um, <laughs> this is good. Uh, this is another example of kind of the in-game content we're doing. So we actually had a student. He filmed this, ran the card up to the press box, yeah. literally ran, um, and we, we edited it up real quick, got it out, uh, and it, it performed really well. I think it was up to like 250,000 views, and uh, this is just an, an angle that no one else is going to get on the broadcast, right. right? So how do we tell that story? How do we – you know, Austin's a great place to play. The, the the experience is great. How do we do that? Um, so this was really cool. Again, more so the the timeliness factor. Yeah. Uh, fan experience, right? The shout. I mean, um, I can't remember exactly what game this was from, but uh, I mean, you got Rivaldo going there. The the pit crew was doing great, and um, the pit crew's kind of this cool resurgence in a way. Yeah. Right. So I think like, how do we uh, leverage that and uh, this is a really cool thing that we did, and um, really happy with well, this. Well, and it's, and it, this is a tradition, right? Like right. you talk about storytelling, seeing it in different ways with different people. We could do one of these every year, and it'll do right. well. Right? I know. I mean, that's it, what we should do. We do even with football. We post probably what two or three a year, and they always get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views because people are like, "Oh man, I want to experience that." Um, so I don't know. Again, those fan experience things and showing love to the pick room we can because without them, I mean, what would we do? Love that. Uh, this is the breast cancer awareness uniform. So this was. God, I, I saw the three days for the normal uniform. This was like weeks. I mean, really? This was, we had meetings on meetings and talk about what we want to do here. Um, Eric Evans helped out with this. Um, Josh Heim, you know, the whole creative football A lot of lighting. Room. Yeah, I can tell. Oh, Just... my God, yeah. And, I mean, I, I went in and I cleaned up every stitch and thread on here for yeah. hours um, and making sure it was perfect because, um, again, like, we're going to tweet it, but everyone else, it's almost like creating a media kit. You know, everyone. So many people are gonna pick this up. We gotta make sure that we're controlling every detail we can. Make sure the Nikes are all straight. Yep. Uh, making sure you can read the Go Ducks. Everything looks good. The colors are right. Um, again, it's just you know we gotta make sure we we do Nike as well as we possibly can every single yeah. time, right? So um, that was a cool experience and uh, something that you kind of forget about the reach that you have, right? Until you do no something like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Again, showing love to sports other than you know the you know the volleyball. I mean, they went to the elite eight. Right? It's yep. awesome. Like that is how do we how do we show love to them? And this was something that was um, we put together for them and um, kind of uh, you know a little bit different than a still graphic, right? Yeah. So something that kind of makes people stop and look at it a little bit more. Uh, but this was a really good performing piece and uh, something I know the volleyball team really appreciated. Which it's been a nice. theme I've I've noticed with some of the the recent stuff is is that that exactly like it's not. It's not a true still. Mm -hmm. It's not a video. Right. You know, it's it, what's the proper terminology? Animation, right? Yeah, motion graphic. Motion is, yeah, graphic. yeah. And I think, um, you know, like a good photo is always going to have its purpose. A good graphic is always going to have its purpose. But, uh, you know, the way people are trained is their, their attention span is so small. Yeah. So it's like how do you get them to stop and look at something? Uh, right now it's to make it move, right? Yeah. Um, it's going to look like a video. Um, not only are you going to get probably rewarded that, like Instagram kind of rewards videos more than anything else, um, but – um, that's kind of how we approached it. So, well, this has been great. Yeah, it's been I, awesome. awesome to to hear about just sort of the the process of how all this comes. And you know, I I hope fans like we we've had uh, Ian, your predecessor Josh was on before, and I, I love having you guys on to talk about it because there's such a uh, 
a focus on it now in today's world, but also there's a lot of time and energy that goes into something that lasts for five seconds on somebody's <laughs> timeline, right? Like, yeah. it's amazing uh, what you and your team do. I, I, I like to leave with this because I got to tell you, I could talk to you for an hour. Uh, this has been a lot of fun for me just to, to, to take fans inside the process. What advice do you give now to, to your interns? What advice do you give to people that are like, you know, I see this. I think I could be good at this. I'm creative. What advice do you give to people now? Yeah, I think the biggest piece of advice is just get out there and start creating, right? Like, I mean, again, kind of the iPhone photo, like, that showed to be one of our <laughs> most – like, it was the best piece of content we've had in a while, and it wasn't created with anything more than you carry in your pocket. Yeah. Um, finding stories to tell, connecting uh, with people, and, and just, like, don't – just start learning, learning everything you possibly can. I think um, in the past it's always been, you know, I'm a designer only, I'm a videographer only, but now yeah. – you're looking for people with like kind of Swiss Army knives in a way, right? Can you do everything? You know, you might specialize in one thing, but can you do everything kind of so, you know, so that way we can, if you got to go shoot a mic'd up, can I go trust you to do that? Um, or you got to shoot a media day, can you yeah. do that as well? So um, kind of building your skill set a little bit, building your tool belt, um, and, and being able to do a lot of creative things at once is kind of the biggest piece of advice. But also just kind of take av- take advantage of the opportunity, especially being an organ, right? Like I, th- right. I tell my students this a lot is that um, – you know, the amount of eyes on our stuff is, you know, kind of pressures a privilege in that way. Um, it, it's great in that if you do a great job, you're going to get rewarded for it too. Um, so um, we give you the platform, maximize it, and that's kind of yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. I, I always tell everybody that, that in today's world, you have to be a jack of all trades and a master of few. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. you, ha- you have to be really good at a few things because there's probably somebody else out there that's really good at a few things. If you're only good at one thing, Yep. You may not get that phone call. Exactly right. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same way. Well, hey, this has been a lot of fun. Joey, thanks, man. Ian McFarland, the Assistant Athletic Director for Creative and Digital Media. And, you know, I'm just going to call you the Godox boss. <laughs> Can I do that? That's how I, I don't want you to know that, that that's the copy that I wrote for today's tweet is that you're the at Godox boss. Uh, yeah, we can go with that. All right, good. Yeah, we'll go with that. Good. This is good because, you know, I, I say I, I've made this joke before, so be bear with me okay. until you get to the point where your 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 business card is just like ceo or in our line of work just ad yeah there's always a really long title so i try to just shrink it down and make it you know the go ducks boss go ducks boss yeah we yeah. Can go with that yeah we'll try it out i want to leave with this too just just lastly like fan engagement does matter for oh, these things 100%. With, with with recruiting like you and i have talked about this off the air like j- can you just take fans inside that process too right like mm-hmm. Having that engagement is valuable in recruiting and the growth of Oregon. I don't know, just all those things. You're the expert here. Yeah, and I, I kind of mentioned a little bit is that when student athletes come here, they want to see the power of the of the brand that they're joining, right? Because they're kind of almost working as influencers for us. Um, so if they come in and they say, hey, you know, Godox gets a ton of likes and all their stuff, you know, I'm getting seen by a bunch of people and they have all these followers, um, that's really valuable to them. And I think they're going to want to see how can I leverage that. Um, you know, in, in my career and, and as I grow. Um, so I think the more interactions we have on stuff, it, it's just going to benefit everybody in the end, right? So um, the liking, the retweeting, even stuff that, uh, you know, sports that you may not follow super yeah. closely. Um, one, I mean, you might end up following them and realize, hey, this is a – why haven't I followed this earlier? Like, yeah. what? why have I not, not done this? Like, you know, the footballs and basketball are great, but – Again, the softballs and baseballs and the, and the women's golf team is unbelievable, right? So the men's tennis shoot yeah. with the Harley was yeah, I mean, legendary last yeah, week. I know, and I feel like uh, that was something that we just were like, yeah, I guess we'll do a photo shoot with the Harley. Let's make it happen. Why not? Well, yeah, why not? And I think yeah. uh, the people that saw that like that was the coolest tennis photo shoot I've ever seen. It's like, thanks. I mean, that's yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad people saw that. Um, but yeah, I, I think the the engagement really matters, and I see people, you know, being fans, and I think um, you know it, when a recruit sees. Hey, uh, a post of a student athlete kind of similar to me got twenty five thousand likes. You know, that's that's really something to notice. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. So makes a difference. Exactly. So encourage everybody to keep up with us and and you know honestly um, keep up with with teams and, and start to follow more accounts than just the main go to go to scout. So Ian, thank you, sir. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Had a great uh, time. Next up, <laughs> we got a lot to cover. Uh, baseball. We're going to hear from Coach Lombardi. She's going to join us coming up, uh, so stick with us. Thanks again, Ian. Yeah, Appreciate man. the time. Thank you. Uh, back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear winner, Toyota's got 20 vehicles with available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, and that's more than any other auto brand. So you bring the action, and we'll bring the traction. Always Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer's websites as of 11 22
At Shadow Hills Country Club, our all-inclusive event pricing allows us to take care of all of the details while you enjoy your event. Our wedding garden, expansive grounds, ballroom and meeting rooms can accommodate any size event and come complete with full catering and service staff. From weddings to business and social events, Shadow Hills offers the benefits of a resort atmosphere and the peace of a country setting just minutes from downtown Eugene. For more details, call us today or go to ShadowHillsEvents.com. Dear Winter, Toyota's got 20 vehicles with available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, and that's more than any other auto brand. So you bring the action, and we'll bring the traction. Always Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturers' websites as of 11 22 You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider. On the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Hey, uh, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Learn more at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Meet Ed, movie buff, animal lover, safe driver. Five years of driving an ambulance teaches you a thing or two. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. When I see a car trying to rush past the turning bus, I get concerned. You see, when big vehicles turn right, they have to swing wide to make the turn. And that's a lesson you don't want to learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's, it's our roads. roads. It's, it's our, our safety. safety. Visit www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Back inside the Country Financial Studio, Duck Insider is presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Really enjoyed that conversation with Ian McFarland in charge of all things social media, graphics, digital media, creative services. There's a lot of different titles for these things now across college athletics, so that's why I summarize it to the Go Ducks boss. I think that's a good summary. We're going to talk with Coach Lombardi coming up in just a little while. Uh, I, I do want to give you an update. Mark Wasikowski did meet with the media today. We're going to talk a little more baseball coming up. Uh, keep your eyes open for maybe some changes, though, to the baseball schedule because there's going to be some rain down in Santa Barbara, so we'll see what happens. Elsewhere, a reminder, tip-off Tuesday coming up. Kelly Graves and Kennedy Basham talking with Terry Johns from – the Oregon women's team, and they move everything up with that Pac-12 tournament on the horizon next week. Thursday, 7 o'clock against Arizona. Big game. I think the Ducks are still right there to maybe make the NCAA tournament, but got to take care of business here at home against a good Arizona team on Thursday, and then at noon on Saturday, the Ducks taking on Arizona State. Oregon men's basketball is on the road in Corvallis at 7 o'clock on Saturday. When we come back, I had to make up time because, honestly, I went a little longer than I thought we would with Ian. We're going to talk with Coach Lombardi. Oregon softball head coach joins us on Duck Insider right after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. This is Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. I've been driving trucks for a long time. And safety is my number one priority. I know that my truck has huge blind spots. That's why I remember to check my mirrors often for smaller vehicles. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. Next time you're behind the wheel, try to avoid lingering in those blind spots. It can be dangerous. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. I found hope. 
in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Alcoholism is a disease that can affect any family. Everyone suffers, but there is help and hope at Al-Anon Family Groups. Al-Anon gave me my life back. I'm a better father and husband. Are you in an overwhelming situation because of someone else's drinking? Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Local and virtual meetings are available. Maybe one could work for you. Call 1-866-200-0033 or visit al slash hope. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack in the Country Financial Studio. Melissa Lombardi is here. Every Tuesday, uh, we always record Tuesday morning because, not to break the fourth wall too much here, but you guys are an afternoon practice team. Lift in the morning, practice in the afternoon. Is there a science behind that? Like, how, 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 how do you approach that with scheduling during the season? That, that's just something we've always done. Mm. I just think it works. I mean, we, our best time of the day is going to be in the afternoon. Right. So it's when you're playing. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I guess, although you guys did play some pretty early games and you do in the tournaments, so you're always ready to go. Review the weekend for us. You went 5-0. and oh. It was a really good weekend. Um, I loved how our offense came out and just showed the power. Like, I've been talking about mm. this power, and right, and you're going to feel this offense this year. I think you really got to see that this weekend. I loved the power, but I also loved when we needed some situational offense that they did that as well. Um, I thought Stevie Hansen was really, really good this weekend. Really, really good. And I just think our defense is always just solid. Mm. I was going to ask you, actually. I, I, we can talk about offense. We can talk about pitching. Mm-hmm. We're going to do that. But I just generally speaking, your okay. defense. Okay. Another good weekend. Yes. Um, I'm going to keep asking you about it because it's like a reverse jinx. I think. I don't know if you believe in such things, but that's what I'm going to keep doing. Is that okay? Yeah. So the defense was good. You were really happy with it. Yes, I like our defense. I, I think our defense just you, – you have to work really hard to hit the ball through our defense. Yeah. You have to work really hard. Stevie Hansen threw a no-hitter. Mm-hmm. Not bad. No, not bad at all. <laughs> what worked so well on Friday? How cool was that to see? I really liked the combination of her speed and her movement. That's what I really liked. Um she, she was throwing really hard this weekend for her, and I liked how she constantly was ahead in the count. Um, she had opportunities to get ahead and put hitters away early, and I felt like that was the biggest difference for her. Yeah, you know, I, I hear so often diamond coaches talk about that getting ahead in the count is one of the most valuable things. So true, right? For sure, for sure. You know, you – you're giving up hits, and you're wondering why you're giving up hits, and it's a 3-0 count, 3-1, 2, you know, 2-2. Two, two. Like, you're putting yourselves just you, – the hitter – if the deeper you get, the hitter starts to el- eliminate pitches. Yeah. They start to go, well, she just threw that pitch in the dirt. She's not going to throw that one. And so they get to gear up for one or two pitches or a certain side of the plate. Um, when you get ahead, it, it gives the, it makes it much more difficult on them. What was the difference, even for, for Stevie, like just the response this weekend compared to last? Like just – the improvement from week to week. I don't know. What, what, what were some of the keys to that? I, you know, honestly, I think the first weekend she just put too much pressure on herself. Mm. You know, she's coming off a great freshman year, and I think yeah. she just put too much pressure. It happens where she just needed and got away a little bit from who she is. I think she would tell you that, too. How do you go about, like, recognizing and handling that as a coach? You know, like, because I imagine that sometimes you know the student athletes maybe even better than they know themselves at times. Like, is that fair? Yes. Um... I think that type of a conversation, it's not the first conversation I've had with a pitcher, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nor will it be the last. Yeah. You know, um, it, it happens. You you sometimes think um, – one of the biggest things I always tell our group is, is that what you have is good enough. What you have is good enough. And sometimes we think we're going to – you know, we need a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Even right in the middle of a pitch, it's like, well, I need a little bit more. And then it, it – you, you know, overthrow it, kind of doesn't overthrow, go where you want it. Yeah, so it's just being in the moment, trusting your preparation, trusting that who you are and what you can do is good enough. You know, on that point, like how valuable is it to, to then two parts? One, have faith in your defense, but then two, you see an offense that puts up double-digit runs. Yeah. I mean, that all of that factors into the confidence of a pitcher. For sure. And if I was a pitcher, I wouldn't want to play for any other team but this team right yeah. here because our defense is crazy. It is – it's – the – the plays these guys make that are very, very difficult plays. I mean, 50-50, big-time mm. plays, they're routine for this group. Yeah. They ru- They expect to make those plays. See, that's why I asked about defense first. <laughs> now we can talk about the pitching. But I do want to just put it in okay. context. 3-0, and a .780 RA, 24 strikeouts, two walks, and 18 innings for Stevie Hansen. So yeah. is that – 
every weekend's going to be different. But when you, if you when when you play five, you're going to take those numbers every weekend from Stevie Hansen, right? For sure. Yeah. How about the rest of the staff? Tell us how they did. Yeah. Um. Good. Same thing. I think um the staff is. We have a staff, and I really like that a lot. I think of times where um, Reagan, I love how she's coming in. Um, you know, we have pitchers that throw up, and she throws hard and down. Yeah. And we've had opportunities in these last two weekends where we've been in a little bit of a jam, and we need her to come in and throw her drop ball and let her mm. defense behind her work. And I think she's been doing really, really well with that. You've won seven straight overall mm -hmm. after the 5-0 and weekend. Uh, I want to mention something about the depth of your order real quick. So the bottom yeah. third of the batting order, 7-8-9, <laughs> all right? 442 average, 19 for 43, 10 runs batted in, two home runs, two doubles. So, you know, do you just move them up to the top three? I mean, I, I don't know. How do you how do you do this now? Um, that's what you need. You need <laughs> that bottom – you know, it, it's not about where you are in the lineup. It's about um, whether you're in the top or you're in the bottom. It's about where you are that allows you to be really good at what you do. And when you can have a bottom like that that can flip the lineup over, that's huge. Yeah. You, you need a bottom to flip. And um, I was really happy with how the bottom half of our lineup did this past weekend. Overall, the team hit 372. And you mentioned the power, nine home mm -hmm. runs. Um, it, that's game-changing. Right. I mean, that that can change a game. And it did a couple times late in the game in tight games. The power was the difference over the weekend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's nice to, you know, one swing can change the game versus having to put a couple swings together. So, you know, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording too, coach, like the identity of your team, though, it's not just power. You know, you, you've utilized the, the, the small. What is the identity of this offense? Now? Yeah, we, we're not. The power is not our identity. Our To me, our identity is. You know, you think about every time you go and face a team or a different opponent, you're going to, there's going to, you're going to have to, you can't beat them the same way every time. There's going to be, you're going to be required to do different things. Um, so what I like about our team is that we have the ability to do situational hitting, that we do have the power. Um, we have the, we run really, really well. I mean, the, the, it's amazing the amount of extra bases this group takes and how they can make something out of something small. They can make make it big. Um, to to look at an opponent's defense and, and see how they're playing us, which it opens up, you know, small ball for us yeah. as well. Uh, you know, I think of this weekend, what opened up our power and our offense were the the bunts for uh, a hit um, that started off the inning. Yeah. So. And, you know, that was my next question, actually, is your speed. You were 10 for 11 stealing bases, mm -hmm. too. I mean, it, last year, speed was a weapon for the squad. More so even this year, perhaps? Yeah, th this this group's on a mission. They want to break their stolen bases from last year. Last <laughs> year, we were trying to get to 100, and we just fell short a little bit, and they want to get there this year. Century mark, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you average 10 in a weekend, that's – the math works out. <laughs> the math works out by the time we get to the end of the year. Melissa Lombardi joining us. Uh, I do, I do want to ask you about some individuals. And one of the things that sticks out to me is, like, when a when a veteran comes up in, for example, like when I sit here on a Monday and I do kind of the, the, the review of the weekend, and I mention Tara McGowan's name in, like, three of the five games as having a big impact. That's what you want from a veteran. She hit 556 this weekend, right? Yeah. Yes, that's Tara. That's Tara, and I don't think I'm asking too much <laughs> with yeah. that. I, I really don't, and she would say the same thing. I mean, that's what Tara is known for. Um, she is a great hitter, and um, she's been here. She's an elder. Like, she's been through it all. She's played against the best competition, and it's important for her, and it's important for Allie Bunker mm -hmm. to lead the way. And I thought they did a really good job of that. You know, similarly, I was going to ask you about Allie Bunker. I mean, she has two home runs, a triple, a double, hits almost 400, not asking too much. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I love that because, you know, veterans are going to put pressure on themselves whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. right? But it seems like they've their their personalities embrace that. Yes, and I think they're at a point in their career where maybe um, – they would be it would be too much for them to handle when they were younger they're they're older now they've been through it they they let things roll off their back so much quicker than they would have when they were younger you know they i think they've got thick skin they have a bad at bat okay that that at bat wasn't my bat but this next one is yeah where maybe when they were younger they would have taken that bad at bat into the next is that all experience or is some of that like it's personality you know that some people are more geared to to work that way it's experience it's maturity it's understanding how to be a leader. Um, it's putting the team first and not getting caught up in yourself. Yeah. 
So that's what's cool about getting to watch these guys play yeah. this year. Especially you, you've been around them now for yeah. a while, right? Like you, you know them, they know you. You know, there's something to be said for that. The chemistry between a coach and a team, right? For sure. For sure. And it's I, I've enjoyed so much coaching them and just watching them evolve as people, mm. as teammates, you know, as players. So I, I'm I'm I think we're gonna continue to talk about a lot about those two. That's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting, like doing this every week, it, it's funny, like I you're probably the same, like and I've said this to you before, I get lost in sort of like the the day to day. Mm -hmm. And then we forget like how impactful one weekend, one game can be in the ebb and flow of a season, but in order to have that steady success and climb, it's usually the veterans mm -hmm. that make a difference uh, over the course of a season, right? Yes. We'll talk about them more. I do want to ask you about one other individual, and that's Taya Bird. She hit mm -hmm. 538, slugged over 900, multiple extra base hits. Um, that really that, Talk about depth in a lineup. Mm -hmm. Somebody like her really gives that to you. Yes, um, and I just think about just – the time and the work that she's put into her swing with Coach Martyr. And um, it was awesome to see her hit. She's strong. She's powerful. And um, I think she had a really, really good weekend, and I'm excited to see her take that into this next weekend. Well, how about Ariel Carlson, too? Had some mm -hmm. big big spots for you this weekend. She did. She did. She came up big. I mean, that there was a, a home run, an oppo home run that yeah. she hit. this Like, it just didn't barely get over the fence. I mean, it went into the top of the bleachers. Yeah. So I just think that shows you how strong she is and, and her ability to change the game with one swing. We, oh, yeah. we need that. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Milano's call of that was great, by the way. Mm -hmm. nice, nice work. Uh, Ryan was on the trip, uh, going to make the trip again. Uh, Marionette Collegiate Classic coming up. Five games. Four of them are against NCAA tournament teams. Uh, number three, Florida. Number 14, Northwestern. Missouri, Cal State, Fullerton. The Marionette Collegiate Classic is becoming an annual tradition for you. You always yeah. go down there. We love going to that tournament. I, I think it's um, important that we, out of the gates, play tough competition. And we got to do that in Puerto Vallarta. We got to come this past weekend and – you know, to play San Diego State at home and beat them. I mean, that's a team that's I would think has a really good opportunity, you know, to be in the top or win their conference. Um, and they're a postseason team as well. Uh, there's just – I think each weekend there's little things that we need to do along the way for us to continue on this journey. Friday, back in action. Coach, thank you. What did we miss? Anything else fans should know? Um – no, I think we got it all. I love that. See, I'm two for two. <laughs> We've been able to cover it all. Um, congratulations on a good week, and uh, here's to going 5-0 and oh again. Sounds great. All right. Miss Lombardi, Oregon softball head coach. When we come back, I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the other diamond sport. You talk about impacts from freshmen. That's what Oregon baseball had this weekend, and we're going to talk about that when we come back on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. At Shadow Hills Country Club, our all-inclusive event pricing allows us to take care of all of the details while you enjoy your event. Our wedding garden, expansive grounds, ballroom and meeting rooms can accommodate any size event and come complete with full catering and service staff. From weddings to business and social events, Shadow Hills offers the benefits of a resort atmosphere and the peace of a country setting just minutes from downtown Eugene. For more details, call us today or go to shadowhillsevents.com. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union, onpointcu.com. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for children and teens. Hospital and doctor visits, prescriptions, shots, and more are covered. That's peace of mind for parents if a child is sick or gets injured. And parents may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if they've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 
The United States Deputy Sheriff's Association is a national nonprofit and the largest non governmental provider of services to law enforcement. The USDSA assists city, county, state, and federal agencies with free safety equipment donations and officer survival training, along with cash donations to families of law enforcement officers who perish in the line of duty, college scholarships for the children of law enforcement, a citizen awareness program, and more. For more information on the USDSA and how you can help, visit usdeputy.org. Fun chat with Coach Lombardi on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. From one diamond sport to another, how about the freshman impact from Oregon baseball? Uh, the Ducks got great pitching over the weekend against a Xavier team that returned seven of their nine starters, and they hit almost 300 last year with 100 home runs. Well, Oregon's freshmen combined for a .78 ERA over opening weekend. In 23 innings, they allowed five runs, and only two of them were earned. The freshmen were excellent. One of them, who was maybe the best of the bunch in the Sunday game, Jackson Pace was outstanding, and he had some great things to say about this freshman class, why they've been so successful. Some of the thoughts from Jackson Pace. Obviously, heading into this weekend, you probably wanted the same outcome. You guys wanted to sweep, but what are some other things like specific that you wanted to uh, kind of check off your checklist going into this next weekend? Going into the next weekend? Mm -hmm. So um, going into this next weekend, um, just keep playing together, keep playing like a team, um, and everybody play to their best ability, and uh, I think we'll, we'll do something special. Did you expect to start the year in the rotation like this? No, I did not expect this at all. Um, I kind of just took it day to day, and uh, you know, I was just gonna, wherever I ended up, that's where I ended up, and that's how I'd help everybody, and um, yeah, so I'm very thankful that I'm in the rotation. Chris, what was your reaction or, or thought process when you found out you were gonna get a start this week? Um, when I found out, I, it was last weekend after a scrimmage, um, I'd just come out, and then he's like, you know, we're gonna, we held you back a little bit, because you're gonna be going on Saturday, and uh, I kind of didn't really know how to take it at first because, like, you know, I just came out and I didn't really know what was going on. But it was I was very excited and I was very happy and very thankful that I got this opportunity. You guys are, your team in general, you guys had eight or nine true freshman pitchers this weekend. Yep. Just what's the camaraderie like between you guys as true freshmen to come out there and then perform well these last couple of games? We're all really close. Um, I love everybody on the team and especially the freshmen in my class. Um, I think we're all special in our own way. We all got different talents, and I think we all blend together nicely to uh, help the pitching staff do the best they can do. I've got a random question for you. Okay. What size shoe is Dylan McShane? Dylan McShane is a size 18. Okay. He uh, had to have special ordered cleats because they couldn't make them in his I size. I realize that they're, they're, they're different than everybody else's. Yes, like these they white are. Ones. They could not find cleats for him, so size 18. Okay. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> but, yeah. Coach Wallace kind of talked about the talent of the team uh, this year. How do you feel like that has helped your team kind of grow um, into kind of what we saw this weekend? Um, I think from a pitching standpoint, it was, you know, facing, you know, the best, I mean, at least for me, the best lineup I've ever faced um, all fall really kind of taught me how to, you know, become like a pitcher, you know, at this level. I thought that was really cool to hear that from Jackson Pace. Also talking about McShane, size 18 cleats. So I asked John Mitchell, Oregon's equipment manager, and John said that he wore football cleats in the fall because that was all that would fit him. That's going to be a fun story to track moving forward. But the Ducks, great start with the freshman pitching. We'll focus in more on Oregon baseball tomorrow. When we uh, get back at you this afternoon, though, tip-off Tuesday. That's right. Going to hear from Chuck Martin and Kelly Graves. See you then. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen. For late nights writing English papers. For your teen's music taste. For dinners, where they talk more on their phone than with you. For the first time, they call you mom. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen, and you can't imagine the reward. To learn more about adoption,